shows like this here, so we don't have to depend on NBC and CBS and ABC. Right. I was I was just telling somebody the other day that I couldn't wait to talk to you because you were actually down there. So what we're seeing on TV, I know they're not telling us what's really really going on. They're just making it seem as though the people are acting like animals and looting and nothing. Everything that the police are doing are justified. So I can't wait to hear a, a first-hand account of what's going on down there, brother. So we'll just start out like that, brother. What is going on down there, brother? Well, first, let's back up because we've been so tainted with what we heard. Right. That is, hold it just one second. Would you please? One minute. Sure. Probably have one of the best researchers teams on the planet. When Ron Brown died, I'm the one that put the pictures out, and he died from a bullet in the back of his head. Right. And nobody could deny it because uh, the white folks that did the autopsy gave it to me. Mm. See, there's a lot of white folks. See, first, white folks think different than black folks, and for a reason. When George Washington was attacking the British, they wasn't attacking the British so they could build a college. They was attacking the British for liberation. We black folks opt for education over liberation. None of us are liberated. It don't say give me education or give me death. It say give me liberty or give me death. Hmm? And so consequently what happens is they can sit and tell us, Oh, let me tell you about you black folks. Animals, you never call the mafia animal. Hmm? Right, exactly. And they bring the dope in the country and sell it. Hmm? And so when you stop and think about, how can you respect me when you see me go to war and fight for this country and kill people or be killed or be wounded and the same Germans I was fighting against comes in my country and get more present than me. You know, how can you respect me when we went to Korea when most Americans didn't even know where it was and we come back and Koreans can come back here and open up businesses <laughs> mm. and we can. But what I do, I didn't know what I'm going to tell you now when I was raising my 10 children. Both the grandchildren, I take them to a paper mill. Have you ever been on the highway and passed a paper mill? One time, one time. There is no stink like a paper mill. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. But the people work there don't smell nothing. Hmm? We black folks live in this country with all this viciousness, but we don't smell it, just like the people in paper mill. Wow. You ever driving down the street one day, and you should do it and follow a garbage collector, trash collector. When lunchtime comes, man, most of them just pull the car over and open up their sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> They're so used to the smell. Anytime you peacefully exist with filth, you become filthy. Hmm? And we don't see it. Huh? And so consequently, um, this see, where we miss it is we think this is just ordinary white. No, there ain't no ordinary white folks. It's a handful of white. White ain't the call. It's an attitude. And if you ain't got trillions of dollars in the bank, you can't have attitude. Hmm? And so this is what the game is, but we don't know it because we hooked to the church. Instead of the church didn't make nothing. The church didn't create trees and waters and oceans. That's the universal God. And that universal God says to you, black folks, I, your God, who created you. And before I let you stoop below the dignity that I gave you just so you can feed your family and pay your rent and send your children, I will destroy you from the inside. Hmm? That ain't serious and roadblock talking. So well, let's look at it. Black people, 12% of America's population, hmm? 12% of America's population. Eighty-nine uh, percent of people on kidney dots machines is black folks. Hmm? 
black men, 4% of America's population, 82% of prostate cancer death is black men. I will destroy you from the inside. I built you. Your mom and daddy, you came through your mama. You didn't come from her. Citizen hmm? Roebuck didn't make your hair. I made your hair. And you black folk walking around talking about good hair and bad hair? Or you accusing me, God, that put the whole universe together, that I make stuff good for certain people and bad for certain people? Whew, what a fool you are. Now watch this now. They have convinced me that the black woman is ugly and I don't even know it. Mm. And I know you black folks sitting there listening and saying, oh, they convince you too. Well, out of all the women on the planet, a black American woman is the only woman that go to a place called a beauty parlor. Hmm? All the rest of them is called hair salons. <laughs> and you're not even aware of it. Huh? Black men walk around talking about the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. Uh-oh. Black woman. They don't say that about light complexed black women. Hmm? Your yeah, brother walk up to me, I want you to meet this lady I'm dating, man. She black, but she fine. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sis and Roebuck didn't make your hair. Hmm? The universal God. Now, y'all can play all the games you want. Hmm? My mother, who raised me, huh? if she walked into your studio tonight, man, she's been dead for years. Whew, you thank God just spit her out. That's how precious and beautiful she was, and spiritual. But if you tried to convince my mother Jesus Christ wasn't a Christian, she would stomp you to death. Because her ignorance didn't permit her to know that Christianity never happened to 300 years after Jesus Christ was dead. Hmm? When my mother hears him say when she's alive, unless you say Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you'll never enter heaven. Well, Jesus can't get in because he's a Jew. He's not a Christian. My mother worked hard. Had six children. No father. She went out and bought all our Christmas, man. And then told us a white man brought it. Can you imagine a Jew being stupid enough to buy a charge for their children to say Hitler and the Nazis bought them? So this didn't just start now. Hmm? I'm 82 years old. My heart's 82 years old. So anything I have with my heart didn't just start now. If my knee is bothering me, it didn't just start now. So don't right. think this stuff just started the other day. Huh? And so, the, so where did we go? Man, I'm so glad I, well, I was going anyway. But it's a festive. It's a festivity, man. Them black folks are driving down the street honking their horn. They got their little babies, their grandbabies, their old grandma. People coming out with you. Why? Because they live there. And they've seen the way they've been treated. But they can't say nothing about it. Hmm? I just finished doing the show and tried to explain the experience. Hmm. This woman... Like many women, got children and mortgage and uh, trying to get their children in school, trying to pay the insurance. And she's a good computer lady, but that don't pay much. So she worked at this company where the owner just fell in love with her. She hmm? didn't know it. And so every time he feels like he just touch on the neck and the collar and take on back in the bathroom and have sex with it. And she make like she like it. Hmm? Because she feels she can't do nothing about it. If I don't do this, my children will stop. I don't do this here. And one day when he finds out she don't like what's happening, is when he falls out on the floor and asks her to run get his heart pills. <laughs> and she go get them <laughs> and pour them on the floor and step on them. Now you realize how I really feel about what you're doing to me. He didn't know that. Hmm? Most white folks in America, because the black folks, they, but they know, but they'll lie to you. Hmm? I have ten children, three of them are boys. And I will never stoop, it's too late now, they're grown, to say to my children, who's created by God, that you might bump into this white racist cop 
behave yourself. He said, get out the car, get out, put your hands up. Anytime you teach a child of yours who's really God's child to be respectful for filth, that's a violation. Hmm? You ain't man enough to tell that cop who might kill him. I'm not going to tolerate this, huh? Not your son. You know how many thousands of black cops in America? U.S. News and radio. Have you ever heard a white person cry and said that black cop <laughs> uh, shot my grandson in the head 40 times? Huh? You never. Know? Never. You think it's because black cops are more spiritual? You think it's because they're better trained? No, they know white folks ain't going to tolerate it. Hmm? That's why. I mean, not one time. And i tell you something else a white cop ain't going to do neither. <laughs> and they don't have to go to school to know this. Hmm? How many times have you had a black man come up to you because your car and tell you that white racist cop hit my car with a nightstick? You ever had somebody tell you that? A black man? No. They wouldn't dare hit a black man, kill your baby, shoot your mama, rape your sister, but they know if they hit your car, you ungodly thug. I'm talking about me. <laughs> All hell will break loose. Huh? And you can shoot me and I'll keep coming because you... Why do you think black men call their woman strong and call their car beautiful, huh? You're a strong sister. No, no, no. You got that wrong. Your car is strong. Hmm? And your woman is beautiful. Now, let me go back to St. Louis. I was born and raised there. Born and raised there. But I want you to understand one thing. If I buy you tonight a $200 million Rolls Royce, <laughs> all somebody got to do is take, take that $30 spark plug out. <laughs> and the car don't work. That's what's about to happen to me. And I don't sell wolf tickets, huh? I don't say God. I would never stoop to make God a pit bull. Huh? The same God that created the Germans created the Jews. The same God that created the slave created the slave master. But I'm dealing with a white, insane system that's the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. I, as a black slave, legally had the right to vote, and the white woman didn't get her right to vote. To 1921, and that's his wife, his mother, his daughter, his girlfriend, huh? And so when you stop and think about who we're dealing with, and we dealt with them for so long, you know, it's like you, you've been coughing for so long, you don't even know you're coughing, huh? So that's what, that's, that, that's what this is about, huh? That's what this is about, hmm? They shouldn't tell me, and we believe it. White folks don't know us because we lied to them. They don't know us. They don't. They don't know how we live. Oh, they see them black preachers and all of them come out against Obama about same sex marriage. <laughs> Man, when, eighty years ago when I was born, my mother and they would take us to the church. It was too little to walk. And then when I'm about five years old, I hear my mother and her sisters in the room talking. You know, Reverend Gully is gay. You know, the choir director is gay. And now we didn't know white folk felt that way about homosexuals. <laughs> so that we make like we don't like them. We always knew what preacher was gay. <laughs> we always know what entertainer was gay. Right. But wait a minute. I take it deeper than that. What they say? Uh, don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> George Washington walking around with them tight satin pants on, them semi high heel shoes, huh? a wig and makeup on. <laughs> mm, right. Come on, y'all. Come on. Huh? And so when you think about that thing out there with Sterling, huh? The basketball. Did you follow that? Right, yeah, Donald Sterling. Yeah, yeah you didn't know that was a gay thing, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't know that, no. Didn't didn't the sister say she'd been with him for five years and he ain't never hit on her? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so anyway. St. Louis, huh? You watched it happen, but now let's go back with no emotions and watch it. Let's go back to August the 9th when he's killed, right? 
Well, how come CBS and ABC and NBC haven't asked the question, why did he lay on that ground for four hours? Hmm? Hmm? And most people ain't even thought about it. You can do that when you think you're dealing with an animal. Hmm? What happened to him? You couldn't do that to a, a deer. You have to get hunting license <laughs> in a deer season. <laughs> wow. You know how many animals is protected? <laughs> he laid there four hours. Then when you do that, then you ask one question. How come? How come we see them pictures? There were no other police cars there. How come there were no ambulances there? Right. What's that about? Hmm? Now, just think about that. We have a lot of, not many now, but we have a lot of little, little, little bitty old black towns, you know, black man, black this, black that, little bitty town. Can you imagine if that been a white person driving through there and that happened to them? They beat and indicted everybody in the town. Hmm? Hmm? And so what we looking at the other day, there's a black man. Laying, they didn't even cover him up with a blanket, huh? They didn't even cover him up with a sheet, huh? Now, the cop is standing there. Do you believe you can kill somebody in America, including a black person, and for four hours, no other cop short, just you and your that other cop is there? Hmm? And why there's so much going on because the black neighbors watched it. They looked at it. Huh? They saw it. Hmm? Hmm. They see pimps, hoes, hustlers. They see killings every other week. They can't do nothing about it. They also see dope pushers, pimps and prostitutes that the police don't touch. And you ask me to respect your local police, you go to hell. Hmm? So all at once now, he's there for four hours, and nobody. Asked. You think you think a gentleman or, 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 or could fall dead, not kill, fall dead, and lay on the ground for four hours? A white gentleman. Now, so that's what you that's what you're looking at, and then black folks was taking videotapes of it. And uh, the nurse, registered nurse, came down and showed the guy his credentials. And said, I'm a registered nurse. Can I give him a uh, mouth to lunch? Get out of here. Huh? Oh. Okay. Now, then they start letting little drips of information out. Like, uh, said, oh, we got this video. Have you seen the video where they say he was getting them cigars? Yeah, some people said that wasn't. Wait, wait, I didn't. I, I, oh, I, 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 I sorry. Didn't sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, a, a glimpse of it, yeah. I've seen a glimpse of it, yeah. Okay. Now, everything I'm telling you, you can pull up. So they said he went in and bought some, stole some cigars. Armed robbery. When you take an armed robbery gun in to steal four cigars, it's called shoplifting. You know what I mean? Black folks and white folks hadn't even said, wait a minute. Armed robbery, larceny. All of them are different. That's called shoplifting. Wife up do it all the time. Hmm? But to him, oh, he didn't have a gun. And then he comes out. The next thing we know, he's dead. But the white folks, they sure how dumb they were that time. They released the videotape of him in the convenience store. And he had a pair of Nikes on. Red and white, had a pair of white socks on. When he's laying out there on the ground, he got on flip-flops. So all the hip black folks are saying, I wonder where he went to change clothes. Hmm? Hmm. Then somebody looked at the video, and it was dated June the 6th. Did you know that? Wow, no, I didn't know that. Wow. The incident didn't happen until August the 9th. The knife, yeah. Okay. June the 6th. And did you know the guy who owned the store had a press conference today, him and his lawyer? 
I didn't, I didn't see that. I heard well, about you it. Need I didn't to see pull, it. You need to pull it up because he said he's never been in my store. I ain't never seen him. Wow. Never have he been in my store. Huh? Well, now we understand why the shoes is different. <laughs> that wasn't him in the first place. That was June the 6th. So he probably walked out with flip-flops that day. <laughs> oh, America. <laughs> now watch this now. Do you know Mark Thompson that has that big show on, on, on uh, uh, oh, I can't think of it a minute. I told him two years ago, me and him hang out, we was in St. Louis the other day. He said, man, you told me two years ago, watch St. Louis. I told you. Why? Oh, come on, I ain't no psychic, man. Two years ago, St. Louis and Maryland had a mock hmm, drill. Missouri National Guard and the Maryland National Guard came to St. Louis and they had a mock, mock exercise on dealing with martial law. Hmm? And when it was over, the Maryland folks, including Fort Dietrich, where all the chemicals are, they left all the chemical stuff here and all the tanks and stuff stayed here. Hmm? Wow. Okay. And that's why y'all who believe in prayer, I do. You better pray that this thing ends quick or you're going to see something that the world has never seen. Hmm? Now, let, 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 let's look at it. He lays on the ground. Now they said the cop didn't know anything about uh, the cigars. Did you know that? Yeah, I heard that, yeah. yeah. The cop didn't know nothing about it. Him and his partner was walking in the street. And the cop told him to get off the street. Well, I guess this black brother is tired of hearing that tone. And said, so I ain't going nowhere. Then the cop said he pushed him back into the police car. Okay, well, now you, mean you got out the police car, you left the door open, and you pushed him, and he reached for your gun, and the gun went off. Well, hey, man, all you got to do is check that police car. The hole would be in it. And see, he had his hand on it. Well, this thing, like it used to be in the older days, you can wipe fingerprints off, but we got technology now. We can take the DNA and you can't wipe that off, huh? Hmm? It's that simple. And now they say he's in the street, and his little partner say, you know, how do a white cop see two black men and kill one and leave the other to be a witness? <laughs> See, they used to make white cops like that when I was growing up. <laughs> I was growing yeah. up. Hmm? Yeah. And he said that he knew exactly when he died. That's how close he was to him. And he told him to run. huh? And now, four hours later, hmm, nobody had called St. Louis. Four hours later, black folks saw that there. Hmm. And the next thing they know, the white cops is in trouble. That's why they having the festivity. Not that they're not respecting the dead, brother. They're having the festivity because the cops are in trouble. Hmm. And now they're running for their life. They used to have to hide and lie and all of that. And then they let some white person get on television today and give his account of it. Hmm? He tell her, and you think she memorized that? You think that was the script? You think that white woman, when she got on that radio show today? And so what we're looking at is, is a movie. Hmm? Well, that's what you plan. I'm just running this to you so you'll be able to have a program now and look at the schedule. That's what you see in there. And then black folks is out there all night long, huh? not just a few minutes, with their signs, happy that this white racist town that's 70% black, huh? 70% black. 
And so that's what we're looking at. And they've made so many mistakes, it looked like it's getting out of hand. Now, you got to ask yourself, well, when they put him in a SUV, now you ain't going to see that in Time Magazine, you know, New York Times. You have to Google it, law-abiding citizens news. Hmm? And, and if you say, oh, that ain't true, let me tell you something. Is that not true? The president, the Justice Department, do America a disservice to let somebody put something back out there. That's a trick. Hmm? That can tip off something. That can end this country. Huh? You hear me? That's that's what you looking at. Y'all can lie up and, and choose sides if you want. Hmm? And so every day is a new ball game. Every day is a new script to the play. I wouldn't be surprised if the black general gets shot in the head and everybody thinks it was the black folk. Hmm? I wouldn't be surprised if a bunch of white cops was killed. Hmm? This is what this is what this thing is about. And so that's 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 what you're looking at. The real deal. What I told you, you're not gonna hear on NBC or CBS or ABC. <laughs> right, right. Like you're what? not gonna hear on NBC that John McCain, Senator John McCain was sentenced by a military court to die before the firing squad, and Nixon gave him a reprieve. Why? He became such a vicious traitor when they caught him, shot his plane down in uh, in uh, Vietnam. He told on everybody. Now, I know y'all sitting there, he's lying. Anybody else, said, all you got to do is put it up on the Internet or buy the book he wrote where he apologized to his father. And he was doing tapes of the North Korea. And the tapes came running. He was hi, I'm Lieutenant Monzo, uh, fighting hard with Don McCain, the United States Navy. I'm a war criminal. I dropped bombs on schools and killed women. That's John McCain. You wouldn't believe it. Democrats don't talk about it. You can't believe you heard it the first night coming from me. But why don't you, why don't you Google it? And then go by the book he wrote where he says, I hope my father was because his father, his father was an admiral. Hmm? And you don't hear no Democrats, Republicans, people be arguing with him. They don't talk about it. Huh? And so, again, I'm saying uh, meditate. Meditate. Every day at 12 noon, at 12 noon, whatever time to schedule you in. 12 noon, not by your watch. 12 noon is when the sun hits your head at a right angle. And just meditate. And maybe we can pull this out. Meditate that. Not that the white cop. <laughs> that's found guilty. No, no, you can't play with God. The same God that made the white cop also made Brother Brown. The same God made the Jews, made the Germans. The same God made the slave master, made the slave huh? You got to be careful how you mess with the real God. You can do all that stuff to your church. Hmm? To that real God, I just pray that the truth will come out. What does that mean? That means if what that white cop is saying, let it come out. If what the black folks are saying, let it come out. That's a hip prayer, man. Then y'all just do it. Watch and see what's going to happen in about three or four days. So I just want to explain to you that I just got back from St. Louis. And that's, oh, let me see the other thing, I hope. Uh, I'm in the park. Saturday, about a thousand people at that section. So I go over to get me a bottle of water and some juice. And I reach the paper and say, oh, no, 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 there's no charge. And I said, is this for Dick Gregory? No, no, everybody. These folks get up in the morning, man, and pack boxes and go by the store and pick up the water and the juice and the chips and give them away. That's how happy they are. Not that he's dead. It looked like they might not get away with. Hmm? Wow. So, you ready for some questions? Anybody calling in? Uh, well, yeah, we're just doing a one on one. Oh, and, that's um, good. That's good. No, 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 that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm, if I'm, you I'm, have I'm, any questions, let's let's roll, man. Yeah, the first question. Um, I mean, 
all we seen on the media was them point um, making it seem like giving this who? image. They, they're giving this image like they're you know the blacks were animals down there. They, they're just down there looting. So the accounts you're giving is real different from what they're giving. So it's just interesting to hear. Well, let me ask you this here. Let me ask you this here. You think the Jews would have been mad? If they had to look at TV and see what how Hitler was describing them, <laughs> you think they were that stupid? Wow. What do you think of Count Lugier, huh? This didn't yeah. just happen. Hmm? This didn't just happen. It's always been out there. Hmm? We're not willing to die. That's why I came. Hmm? We don't kill, but if we have to die, let us die. In that civil rights movement, we took on the mightiest nation in the history of the planet with no guns and brought them to their knees. Hmm? And then the other day, six months ago, the Supreme Court, not the Ku Klux Klan or the White Citizen Council, not some ignorant redneck white boy who can't read or write, the most powerful nine men in the world took your voting rights away. And I heard y'all say, no, if this was claiming you'll be still money. Anybody can march on poor folks, huh? Hmm? If you're stupid enough to believe the Klan determines public policy, hmm? Come on, give it up, huh? So what, what what do you think about Obama's response to what happened? And um, do you think he gave an appropriate response? And, you know, wait, to wait, make wait, it... Oh, 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 oh. Hmm. What percentage of black folks is in America? 12%? Right. <laughs> What do you expect me to do? Hmm? Well, wait a minute. Oh, man, I, I messed up today. You know how I've been throwing off my show in the last two days? Oh, yeah. I want to thank the white reporters that they actually messed around and, and arrested. Otherwise, we wouldn't see what we see in now. The Washington Post reporter slapped his head up against the McDonald's wall. That's why you get in this way. That's why the first time the president on his vacation held a press conference. Oh, because of the footage the Washington Post released. released. Oh, they didn't have to release it. They knew the press got, got arrested. You don't do that. Do you know we send press all over the world to cover our wars, and the enemy don't mess with the press, huh? Hmm? But here, when last time you heard Rebecca reporter getting arrested in Iraq? <laughs> yeah. And so, no, he had no had no choice. Because, you see, don't listen to me and, and, and underlook the decent white folks, huh? The decent white folks. Them white folks out there that's yelling and hollering with, with uh, are they provocateurs? Hmm? Oh, they, they, do you believe that black folks had bandanas on, all of them? Hmm? <laughs> if all black folks out there every day on the march be walking down the street with watermelons, man, they'd be knocking them out of their hand because they ain't seen that type of use. They must be bombs in them watermelons. Right, right. And so just, uh, just keep your eyes open. So do you think we might see this in other cities or states across the country? What's going on, this martial law? So you say they can get by with this one. This, this might be the big test, huh? Right. Look, let me check with him. Let's say somebody's killed. Let's say they go in town and kill some white folks. And then make them think, and then they get some Negro that's under mind control. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> then they got you. Hmm? What this country has done, if the universal God don't do nothing about that, then that God owns Solomon and Gomorrah apology. Huh? Hmm? Wow. What go around, come around. Hmm? Every great nation that thought they was bigger than God. Where are they? Where are they now? Hmm? Every great nation. Huh? And what's worse than that, every great nation went into Afghanistan 
It never came out. But because of white supremacy, and most of you white folks don't, don't act crazy now because you ain't one. Okay? I keep saying white ain't a color. It's an attitude. Huh? White. Huh? And when you sit and look at poor white folks, just look at, if you just looked at them, poor, scratchy dirt. Mm. Hate everybody. I don't blame it. Shit, if I was white and qualified to be president of the United States, but no, you could never be. And let me tell you why black folks know so much. <laughs> come you can work for the rich white folks. They wouldn't let you little red leg come nowhere. If you get in a 50 mile radius of Rockefeller's home, they will kill y'all. Black folks, that's why we know so much. Hmm? Because black folks is there with the power. And we hear them talking. Poor and porters. Couldn't nobody ride on those cars but rich white folks. And we heard them talking because I was invisible. We know what football games are going to be tricked. We know what the stock going to do. 80% of your Pullman porters was millionaires. Two of them went to college because they heard white folks talking. Hmm? They heard white folks talking. And, 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 and so that's what this is about. And if you just look, white folk got liberated because of us, because when they passed that legislation, they didn't say for Negroes only. Do you know before that movement of the 60s, a white woman couldn't do nothing? An airline would be a stewardess. She couldn't be a mechanic. She couldn't even take my job. She couldn't be a, a baggage handler. And in order to be a stewardess for low blacks, you had to look like something off the center page of Playboy magazine. And because of our movement, anytime you get on a plane now, see an old, short, fat, ugly white suit, we got her that job. I a mother, a father of the Marines. Us. And we've never been told thanks. Before our movement, a woman couldn't be a cop. you got women head police departments. Huh? Before our movement, a woman couldn't be a firefighter. Huh? <laughs> couldn't be a detective. Couldn't be. Do you realize how many criminals got away? Because half the American population didn't qualify <laughs> to be cops. Hmm? You know, it's interesting you say that. A lot of people, uh, actually, I've heard a lot of people get upset saying that other groups, um, the immigrants, women, the gays, seem to have benefited more from the civil rights movement uh, than blacks have. What you well, know? Wait a minute. Oh, 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 oh. If his white wife, his white daughter benefits, everybody benefits because it didn't say for Negro. You ever walk down the street and see them sidewalks with that little indenture in it for wheelchairs? Yeah. <laughs> that's that come on before our, our bills. Then people start talking about rights for crippled folks, for handicapped folks, <laughs> for mentally retarded folks, and for gays. That's, that's where it goes. But before this movement, they wouldn't have had nothing. Yeah. Well, um, I certainly do appreciate you coming on the show, uh, Nick Gregory. Uh, hearing your first-hand account of what's going on down there. You've uh, dropped some information that I haven't heard before in the media, so I'm glad. I know the people are going to be glad to hear that. And yeah, well, um, Let me just say this. Anytime yeah. you want me, tell the people how you have to get me. Who you go through to get me? i, I got to call your wife. i got to talk uh, to Mr. Let me Mr. Check. <laughs> I, I made millions, man. I never had a check in the account in my life. Huh? <laughs> All hers. Black woman is the most powerful woman in the black church in the history of America. Hmm? Uh -huh. And that's why my marriage had lasted 55 years, because I know who the black woman is. Hmm? Wow. Hmm? I know who she is. You know, black runaway slaves that went to Canada. They the ones invented ice hockey. And a white boy named Richard <laughs> Stanley came and watched him. Now it's called the Stanley Cup. The Stanley Cup, huh? 
And so, do you realize, man, that in the history of slavery, we the only slave that wasn't a slave for 5,000 years? We broke them chains in 300 years. Why? Because that white boy thought he was stealing the worker. He was stealing the scientists. I built the pyramid, boy. <laughs> All the great things you go to Europe and look like I built them, huh? <laughs> so anyway, brother, I, I just love you. My wife, you know what my wife told me? Yes. You know this brother, uh, Richard? She said, yeah, you know, you told me you like so, you like so much, right? Huh? <laughs> we want you on the show tonight. And I said, well, oh, Greg, 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 did I say he wanted you on the show? I said, oh, why did you wait to clear with me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thank you, brother. Thank you for putting the information out there. And uh, thank you, people that listen. And let, let me tell you something before I leave. When I was a little boy, most all the little good dudes I knew for Christmas, man, we wanted a fire truck. Did you ever, were you ever in that bag? Yeah, yeah. Ain't it funny we never wanted a police car? I never thought about it like that, but you're right. But wait a minute. But nobody taught us. We didn't know anything about the police, huh? Mm-hmm. The fire truck come by, you wave at them, police car. But I learned back then when I see a siren or a cop car rushing somewhere, I would always say a little prayer for their safety. And I never thought I would see the day I would stop praying for the police. But I never see the day I'd have to see, you know, it's for God, protect them wherever they're going. And if they're wrong, protect the people they're going to deal with. And finally, you need to look, when you back on the air again, uh, probably this Saturday. Okay. Then you need to do your, your audience a favor. Would you write this down? Yes. Yeah. Two years ago, the state of Indiana, hmm, that's where the Ku Klux Klan was created, mm-hmm. passed legislation, you know, stand your ground? Yeah. They create legislation to stand your ground with cops. They have a Law on the books. Huh? I say, if you think a cop is threatening you, you have the right to kill him. Hmm? Mm. In other words, if cops came down with the battering ram and hit your door, and you have a right to go get your double barrel shotgun. That's that's the, no, what you have to do. It's go look it up. Don't take nobody's word for it or something that important. And it's going to be in every state in America. Hmm? Every state in America thought standing the ground was for us, huh? Okay. Yes. So thank you, my brother. Peace and love to you. Definitely, and we look forward to seeing you again. You you become a regular on this show, so I look forward to talking to you next time, brother. We well, just pray that my wife stay alive. <laughs> okay, she's, she's the one that determines where I go. 